And welcome to the fourth SADB podcast. Uh, this time we are talking to people from the Baltics and Russia. Uh, so say hello to everyone here um, and we'll let people introduce themselves so we can get started with no delay. Uh, I guess I'm first. Hello, I am Laura. I am ADC from Riga Roller Derby. I am the coach, the founder, the skater, all in one. <laughs> so yeah, anything else for the introduction? That's fine. Whatever you want to say. That's, uh, that's a good introduction, I think, <laughs> the basics. <laughs> so, Carl? So, I guess I'm the next one. Thank you, Sam. For the invitation, uh, I'm Carl uh, here from Tartar Roller Derby. I'm pretty much the same as, as Laura, uh, been there from the beginning, uh, started it, and still doing it. And uh, hopefully, we can start another season after that was going on right now. And uh, pretty much it for the beginning. So, yeah, here you go. Hulk is next. Yeah. Hulk is next. Okay. <laughs> I'm Hulk from St. Petersburg Roller Derby League from Russia. Um, I've been in roller derby since 2013, and I'm one of the founders, the coach, the skater, the manager of the league. Um, that's, I think, pretty much it. Awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Liz. Uh, Gentle Giant is my derby name and uh, I've been in uh, Tallinn Roller Derby for in September it will be two years so since the beginning not the founder uh, but uh, I've skated since then and right now I'm also uh, coaching because we don't have anyone else and uh, I'm part of the executive board as well. Mm -hmm. And I can continue after Lise, uh, also from Tallinn Roller Derby, but originally not from Tallinn. I'm Antti from Finland. Uh, my derby name is Barbarossa. And um, I started skating in Tallinn, but I have done uh, non-skating officiating in Finland before coming to Tallinn. And in Tallinn, I started to learn to become head referee for Tallinn Roller Derby and have been active in Estonia and uh, somewhere around else as well. Is that next? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hi, <laughs> uh, so my name is Siri. I'm also originally from Finland, but I've been in Tartu for about five years now. And I've been skating for Tartu Road Derby for around four years, I guess. And yep, trying to keep to roller derby alive in Tartu. I don't know how well we're doing at the moment, but <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> so yeah, that's all from me. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, I mean, it's good that we've got a wide range of people and I also have to have officials present as well for these as well, because it's a useful perspective. Um, so I guess my tradition for these podcasts is to start with how did derby get started um, in places? So I guess St. Petersburg was first out of a lot of you. So Oh, you should probably read this. Okay. How did how did how did Roller Derby start in Russia, and then we'll get around to the Baltic states. Uh, okay. Uh, it started in 2013, as I said. Uh, it came from. It actually came from um, uh, my girlfriend. She knew that there was a roller derby team started in Reykjavik in Iceland, and she was there volunteering. She and she after that after volunteering, she came to Saint Petersburg with the idea that we need to start roller derby here and um, she, so she had this idea and she was very excited about it and I we were dating at that time and um, I watched some videos on YouTube about roller derby and I told her no <laughs> it's, it's too dangerous no they are hitting each other they are falling on skates no really come on so this was in February and in May 2013, we had our first practice. <laughs> yeah, so that's quite it. That's the start. There were there were some mm, uh, there were some situations and uh, uh, 
something big going on, but this is like the start of roller derby in St. Petersburg. And for a long time, it was just the one team, right? And then you... Yeah, well, I, think... I think till 2015, because yeah. we were traveling to Moscow in 2000, in 2014, and they wanted to start a team, but there wasn't any leader. So they couldn't just gather up. They were skating, but there was not a team. So yeah, they started showing up like two years ago, I think, in Moscow. So I think a few years later was when we got uh, Derby in uh, the Baltics. I can't remember. Which, I think Latvia was first, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong about this. Um, actually, listening to what Hulk had to say, I can say that officially we were first. Were you? <laughs> that was the first official practice okay. <laughs> of me and another girl skating in a park. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, April of 2013. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. one month. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, basically, I, I uh, accidentally saw a picture online of a derby girl and I fell in love. I had to know what, what is she doing? I need to do this. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> and I, I googled uh, roller derby Riga Latvia and there was one girl actually from uh, uh, she is from Latvia, but she lived in Denmark, and she had just recently come back from Denmark. And she posted on Tumblr, if no one remembers that, <laughs> she had posted on Tumblr, hey, does anyone want to start a roller derby team? This was in January, we spoke a bit, and in April we joined up and started the team. It was really slow for, like, three, four years. We were, like, max five people at a practice for those years, but, you know, then it's a sort of picked, picked up. But yeah, that's the beginning of it. <laughs> and uh, Sonia, did you, um, how did you pick up stuff? Were you, were you aware of Latvia or were you, uh, so, is it something yes, else? The, the thought it wasn't after Latvia or after Russia, it was, um, uh, we invented a team and uh, I just checked, checked it was year 2015. Yeah. But it, Actually, uh, uh, we saw Aurora Derby first at 2011, I guess. But we started to practice. Uh, uh, we saw it in uh, England by the time we lived in England. Uh, first time it was uh, in London. I um, can't remember that it was in May. It was uh, with the old rules. Where the Derby was much different than it is today. But um, uh, there was a, a big gap between the time we saw it first and we started it. So it's, uh, it's like a longer story. Uh, uh, we didn't, when we started Vora Derby, we actually did not know what it is exactly. Because uh, we started like uh, uh, with, the, with the place where people can skate one part of it as we uh we knew roller derby that we wanted to it and we put it in a hall and it, yes hello i'm here i'm the coach i will coach you people let's start it so yeah that's kind of way it, it started and then we started to learn what actually the roller derby is and then we got metrica uh in after i don't know after a few after a year or a few months after that we invited we got the talk and we had the practice together Yes. And we we got uh, loads of information for them and and uh, loads of skills and knowledge how to do what to do and yeah it was it's uh, it's I think it was 2015 or 16 Laura if you remember but I really don't it, remember but I remember that the few people that we were in our team we were so excited about the story and <laughs> yeah exactly At that time nobody was around us and we were like oh my god finally <laughs> Other it's, people. <laughs> it's, it's always really nice that just have neighbors, right? I mean, um. yeah, I think after that, we, we met Riga our first time. After that, we got like, uh, uh, the, we got to go on and, and two yeah. more that roller derby thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the, Any trips to Tartu, I remember, <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Uh, and then, uh, and after that, we actually we uh, uh, the Tartu was we didn't have much people. Then we united Tartu and, and Riga team. We visited each other, so we practiced together, trained together, and uh, yeah. How many have, how many people did you have in the beginning in Tartu? <laughs> Uh, in the beginning, we had the. We were practicing by the first uh, tryout. We had about twenty people, mm -hmm. maybe you, even more. But that's yeah. not bad at all. Yeah, we did not bad at all. Absolutely, but uh, we got uh, two, two or three. Uh, I think two or three girls from there, and then we uh, the first season we went by. Uh, <laughs> four or five people, that's it. Because yeah. I remember when I started skating, it was Katra, uh, then Gertu, who's not skating right now, and then another girl. And we used to go to the skate park in Ropka, or whatever, and we used to mm -hmm. do practice there <laughs> for like half a year or something, which just the four of us. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it must be the same bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So we had one practice in, in the skate park and one practice in the hall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Fun, <laughs> it was fun, yeah. yeah quite good fun, though. <laughs> and there were, there, there, was, there were still not like, there were not hundreds of us, so it's uh, maximum. <laughs> yeah. So, so then how, how long after that was it that we got uh, Tallinn? Because I think there was another little bit of a gap and then we got Tallinn a little, little bit later. Yeah, uh, it was the end of 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So you you are you are relatively new. Uh, Very new. You? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think I think you and um, and Tatu have been doing things together. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we have met uh, quite many times, and because uh, Estonia is so small, like we visit uh, both towns frequently. So. Every time, like if anyone anyone from Tallinn goes to Tartu and there's a practice going on, we can just join in and like we know, we all know each other and so that's nice. And, and obviously, since we have the, this, we have two Finns in the call. Obviously, Finland is also <laughs> not that far away across. The course yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think Ante has been doing more. Well, you've been going to Finland more. I Finnish connection so I was actually talking about how I actually was studying in Tartu around 2015-2016 but at that time I didn't actually know anything about roller derby it was only after I went back to Finland that my sister introduced me to roller derby I guess late 2016 and then I started uh, non-skating officiating and uh, learning the rules but then then, of course, I was interested, like, oh, is there actually a roller derby in Estonia? And I found on Facebook that, oh, okay, there is actually Tartu roller derby. But at the time, I had, like, no idea. So it was only when I came back to Tallinn later that uh, I kind of joined the Baltic scene. <laughs> so you must have come back exactly by the time when I moved to Finland to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 2017 uh, <laughs> in the beginning, I guess. Uh, moved to moved to Helsinki and lived there about uh, eight nine months and joined Helsinki Roller Derby and and done one season with them. Went through the from the from the ground level from the uh, uh, minimum skill part and and then joined the training as well and got got lots of um, information from there and, and, and then back to Tartu, then 18 what was the next season again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I think there's also, I mean, there's also a strong Finnish connection for Russian Derby or at least the Petersburg Derby um, part because well, you've actually played in the Petersburg are one of the, the only teams who have played in Finnish tournaments that aren't Finnish. So. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. For the last like three years, we do so. 
Oh, that's cool. Maybe four, yeah. But we started playing with uh, Finland. So our first game, our first ever game was with uh, Kovala. In oh. Finland. <laughs> so yeah, we started from Finland, we're still there. <laughs> Yeah, I think I I, I was uh, officiating uh, some game with White Knight Furies in 2017 in Yuvaskula, which is probably my first contact with White Knight Furies. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was there were our first games in Finnish tournament, and yeah. it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's if you're gonna if you're going to pick a, a, thing, a place to have your first games in Finland and high and and you know. That wasn't the national tournament. That was the the northern Finnish tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's still a pretty high level for your first games ever you're playing against other teams. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm we came there to have fun, <laughs> and we got our asses kicked. <laughs> <laughs> and we continued. In a fun way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a very fun way. You know, when when there's when we played like two games at one in one day, and then we. At the same evening, had to travel back on the bus uh, to St. Petersburg. Oh. <laughs> so pleasant when you're like, you got hit so hard, every muscle of your body is in pain, and you just <laughs> lay on the ground in the, like in the bus on the like between the chairs, mm -hmm. and you sleep like dead for three or four hours. It's like the best. <laughs> 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 like my perfect <laughs> time spending <laughs> no it, it's really great so the other place there's been a connection and I want to start but I'm going to show footage earlier than I normally would in these podcasts because I know that Laura may have to go uh, so um, the other way in which a lot of connections have been built up is that Central Europe has been quite involved in trying to have games and um, in particular both uh, Czech Derby and Polish Derby have been hosting a lot of a lot of sevens tournaments. So um, I have footage from the last, the third uh, Warsaw hosted uh, tournament, Fab Slav. Um, so I'm going to put on the one of the Riga games, which is Riga against Heartbreaking Dolls, who are one of uh, Prague's teams, uh, which is World Derby sevens. But I'm going to put it on, and we can talk a bit about the game, but also we can talk a bit about just the context of this as well, so feel free to bring up things while we do this. But I'm going to share this, so you should you should be able to see it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to play this, but so uh, this was the third one, I think. Had Riga been to previous, um, the previous um, instances of the Slavic Slavic Yeah. Term? Yeah, we went last year as well. Yeah. This is our second year there. So how how was the experience for, for Riga, uh, both the first time and the second time? Because I mean, like to be very honest, this is literally our only shot of playing. We don't have any other games. We don't host games because we don't have a hall and so on. So this tournament is the biggest event that we have in the year. And uh, the experience, it's... I can't even describe it. It's like, that's what we practice for. It's very cool for all of us to even go and have the opportunity to play against so many other teams and uh, be in that environment together and experience all of that. It's, it's super cool. I can't, <laughs> the experience is awesome, always. I'm very thankful, actually, for the Poland for hosting this so mm -hmm. often and such in such a nice quality and everything. Yeah. Obviously, it's very nervous. Uh, we're all very nervous always and so on, but yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. So uh, I'm trying to remember. I think you did actually did pretty well against Heartbreaking Dolls. I remember. Yeah, we're doing pretty well in these things. Ha -ha. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, you know, for your, for your, for, given, given as you said, it's one of the few times you get to play derby against other teams. I, I, I can't even put it into words because we practice all year. Literally, us max ten people at the practice. Normally, we don't even have a normal five versus five. In fact, I don't even know how many practices we have had. Only when, we, when I yell at everyone and say, guys, we're going to Poland soon. We need to practice to how to stand together on a track, you know? <laughs> but, the, you know, so this is, okay, the quality is 
I don't know how for you guys, but I can't see anything. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, it? but very slowly. It's okay. really choppy. Yeah, I can see, but very slowly too. Okay, so, um, hopefully it'll fix itself up. It's it's okay for me, but it's probably because it's extremely Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see how it, go. oh, it goes. Um, it will be replaced in the actual vodcast with the actual footage. So everyone okay. watching the vodcast will see perfectly good quality. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> back to the point. Um, yeah. Here in these things, we see what we can do and what we can't do. And from these kind of games, we, I, I can personally say that we have kind of perfected the tripod to on our own level. You know, I'm not saying we're playing great, but we, we know what it is to play only three people. So that's our thing. <laughs> You know, so that's kind of our strong side and more or less I think we, we're, we're doing relatively well for our possibilities and resources. I'm very proud of all of us together. So yeah. But so obviously since these are the tournaments you play, you mostly play sevens um, as yeah. opposed to full roster derby. I mean, I guess you have to have the conversation about, I mean, so what are the challenges for Riga? Because obviously you say you, you have at best a roster of 10. I mean, let's talk about how, what, what, what would we do to make that better? Is that a, is a, what are the, what are the problems and what, what are the, um... uh, the problems of getting people, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the problem right now, the main problem that we have, okay, we have several. <laughs> let's start with that. <laughs> But the main one would be that I am, I am the only coach in this team. So what we have now is we have a pretty decent uh, the A team, if you will. <laughs> we have a good, uh, a good little group of people who have a relatively nice set of skills already, which means that I would have to open a new group for the new skaters. And I have tried so many times, but at the end of the day, I am a full-time working person you know I, I used to study at the same time and I'll be in the halls and the expenses and everything it's just it gets a it, it gets too much you know honesty and how to make it better we, we're trying different strategies at first we, we we try to do the fresh meat like open training so everyone can join in at the same time uh, I have recently gone back to the old school way of just write me an email and you can join the next practice. I will dedicate some private time to you. You will work with the cones for the next three lessons. And then I'm gonna start putting you in into more, into other things. We, we, we're trying this again. And so far it's working. We have some, it, it's working good, it's working good. But the separate practices for our different teams, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm go, I, I go crazy, I go absolutely nothing. <laughs> so What's the difficulty in getting other people to volunteer to coach? Because presumably, is it just no one wants to, or is it? Oh, God. The coaching <laughs> thing is because none of us have any experience outside this. Mm. I, I have been, my whole professional life has been two boot camps in Germany. You know, everything that we do here is something we ourselves in a practice or in a meeting discuss, figure out. Nobody told us how to make a tripod. We, we learned about tripods after the game with St. Petersburg. You know? <laughs> we were still standing in the line. You know? <laughs> so I understand why the confidence is not in the other girls to stand up and say, you know what, I'll take the fresh meat, I can do this. Because also I was just put in this position. I was 17, the girl who I previously mentioned from Denmark, she went away to United Kingdom. And basically I was left to do it because nobody else would do it. And you know, if you're in that position where you have to, then you mm. kind of adapt to it and you start doing it. I believe Tallinn probably understands right now what I'm speaking about, right? You just yeah. have to do it. <laughs> I assume that if I left for some whatever reason, one of the girls would step up, but you know, that has to happen. There has to be that, how do you call it? Yeah. But you but, don't have uh, problems. Yeah, but you don't have problems with recruitment, for example. It's it's the fact that administratively you couldn't coach more people, not that there aren't people interested in joining, is what I'm suggesting. So, Right, or, so the coaching thing, I don't think there's a problem of people joining, but there might be a problem of keeping them in, because at the end of the day, the coaching uh, part, it also is very personal. It is very... 
with with all of my skaters, I have a very personal connection. And if there are newbies, well, newbies, fresh meat that I haven't yet connected with, and I don't kind of follow their progress very, very, very closely, then they seem to kind of fall off or they lose the confidence that they can continue mm -hmm. and so on. It's a lot of, it's not just the practices. It's later the Facebook messages of how are you and blah, 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 blah. How do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. What do you need in the practices? That's the extra work, you know? And also, again, uh, it, yeah. It's just sometimes hard to keep them in. Yeah. Because they don't lose the confidence. I'll be honest. It's a it's a confidence mm -hmm. issue a lot of the times. I think that's a problem. I think it's a problem that a lot of leagues have though. Um, um I mean, obviously every league is unique, but certainly Yeah. I mean, I would say that roller derby especially is the kind of sport where you you have to be like confident in your abilities mm -hmm. on some part you have to be able to run into a wall you know you have to be ready to push yourself literally <laughs> literally <laughs> you have, to have that uh, that drive in you you know that passion and, and if you have it it's, it's there forever or of course you can burn out but whatever or if you don't have it it's hard to like go at it like it's just a regular basketball game mm. I don't know. build it from the ground up kind of Maybe that's the problem, keeping the passion alive sometimes. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, World Derby being a grassroots sport means that everyone is doing everything to some extent as well. Uh, <laughs> in a yeah. way, this is different to perhaps sort of sports. Um, I mean, does any of this sound familiar to any of the other? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent, yeah. Laura, we have two coaches and it's not different. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I completely believe it. I mean, my girls, they help me as much as they can and so on. But it's, let's be honest, it's a real job. It's, a, it's another full-time job for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And God forbid I have a burnout, you know, because <laughs> I'm sure everybody know, has this, who, who is dealing with the management side of roller derby. You have those ups when you want to do everything in the oh. world and you want mm -hmm. to be on 24-7 and then you just don't want to <laughs> you don't you don't want to oh that moment but mm -hmm. the good thing is it always it comes back always so, yeah. mm -hmm. push through. <laughs> so we've talked about skaters you have this does Riga have a lot of officials or are you <laughs> we have exactly zero <laughs> officially <laughs> Official officials, we have exactly zero. Um, again, it's one of those things that we have, the best resource that we might have is uh, this person from Finland. I always confuse your name, Antti. <laughs> you know, you have offered to make the, 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 the lesson and everything. It's just a matter of getting together and doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always, always a struggle to find the time and find find the right resources for stuff like that yeah that's kind of on the back of our list to create the officiating kind of scene here mm -hmm. we always offer it as an option because i mean we still all know the rules and we all can't technically officiate a game if we really try hard but uh yeah we don't put much emphasis on that yet because having a competitive muster, competitive muster. yeah right well, because having a competitive roster is also important, so you need enough skaters as well. Mm. Another thing. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, um, I don't know if the theme is cleaned up for you lot, but it's, um, uh, at the moment, Riga is in the lead, by the way, by more than twice the point <laughs> of how they do. Uh, yeah. uh, so, um, again, um, you're obviously doing well skill-wise, regardless of the um, the problems that we get has scaling, but what do you what do you want do you what do you what do you see happening in the future? I mean, if you could change stuff, would you want would it help to have more leagues in in Latvia or <clears throat> being realistic? I think I think it can be possible. I think in the future we can have more teams here. Right now, I don't have the time to go around because I know in the end that would have to be me who introduces it. 
that's that kind of falls on me again and right now i don't have the time but we do plan on doing like free skating things in the parks of our rural communities of the bigger cities and so on i think it's gonna happen because simply because we're doing it and it, that's it we're slowly growing but as long as we're persistent and we keep going and going and going and going and going <laughs> <laughs> unless we suddenly all quit it's, it's gonna keep growing that's it you just have to push through go on that's um, my whole attitude with this I guess uh, speculating about oh, what's yeah. gonna happen is hard yes yeah. Yeah, sure. and it is a lot of work to try and start yeah. living at the places I mean uh, I mean Hulk so um, White Knight Furies and St. Petersburg in general did a bit of a tour and tried to teach people in other in other even other countries about roller derby I think that's cool. Didn't you? Because I think you uh, went to Belarus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In 2017, we were yes. traveling to Minsk, in, yes. to Belarus. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, nothing worked because there wasn't actually there were not actually people who wanted to play roller derby. There were just people who were playing football, who were doing skateboarding and other activities. Uh, and they just wanted to try and to skate on this wow old roller skates like in <laughs> my youth <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah and it was very interesting we had a very mm, quiet a small hall there uh with very very slippery slippery ground <laughs> so we were like in swamp there skating and there was one girl on inline skates she was um she looked like and she was like she was uh an true inline skater she had that helmet uh inline skates that thing uh protection mm -hmm. and um i was explaining like like always i'm i'm coaching i'm explaining something i'm looking at the audience i'm trying to read what they're thinking of what they will be doing next and i see she was with a small bag on her uh and she uh, while i was explaining she just got her phone from that bag and typed there something <laughs> So that was like the level of <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> and I was like, well, take back your phone. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, it's a pity that there were, there were not very many enthusiasts who might start to roll the derby there, but we will try. Still, we will try if anyone will like to start roller derby in their city we will go there with our short track <laughs> mm -hmm. and we will implement it okay. yeah, yeah, so. at, the, at the end of the day th this is the kind of sport where you have to have that passion you know to, mm -hmm. to do a lot even if you're you just want to skate you will still probably have to do other duties in the team as well you know yeah. outside and everything so you will have to have that passion and because for example my country doesn't have that many people as a population i'm not i'm not surprised that we don't have like hundreds of uh, wannabe skaters you know <laughs> not, knocking at the door. <laughs> not everyone is gonna be you know crazy to do this <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. i mean uh speaking of other problems i mean is it easy to get hold of skates even in um in uh because a lot of, I know that court skates are not the most popular skates outside uh -huh. of really roller derby, so. Um. In the recent years, uh, it's pretty easy. We have a shop here who supports and we're working with them closely. We're, yeah, it's pretty easy to get the skates, the chai skates. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why we're all, we all have them. Uh, that was not the situation some years ago when we started. It was very hard. Uh, you just had to order from rollerderbyhouse.eu and then hope that they fit, <laughs> you know. And uh, but yeah, nowadays we're working with that one store together, and they can order all kinds of things for us if we need, and we have a special discount for our team members and everything. So hey. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it is really helpful just having just one store i mean oh absolutely yeah and in a lot of places people ended up founding stores because when they started roller derby i mean the if you look at the 
a lot of the skate stores in shops in the UK and Germany, for example, they tended to have been founded by people in Belgium. They tended to have been founded by people mm. who wanted to get skates. So the, the easiest way was to actually be someone who sold skates. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I have to say that we are also here in Estonia very thankful for that one store in Latvia because we, oh, yeah. <laughs> we also order our skates there now. I was so, like, what? Uh, do we have one in Estonia? <laughs> no, we don't have anything. We can't get protection, skates, what? nothing here. So. I didn't know, but you know what? You should reach out to your local extreme, uh, sto- like, I don't know, extreme sports thing. <laughs> You don't have something like that. We have we don't have that one. <laughs> skateboards and we just, we reached out to them. Maybe they want to promote our sport or something. And it happened to be that the guy is super enthusiastic about extreme sports. And he said, mm. yeah, you're one of us now. That's cool. <laughs> I think I think in Estonia, the closest thing that we have to that is Carl, actually. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for my turn. That I've got to... <laughs> but he, yeah. There is a there is a yeah, possibility to to get local stuff as well if yeah trying to uh, it's uh, just few few labels there but we in in Tartu we have uh, also the to for people to try we have like lots of old uh, equipment from the uh, roller disco for people Get to try. Down. But also, also, uh, yeah. There's a there's a shop that that sells equipment for for roller derby. Paul, you can say yeah. it's yours. Thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> yes, we are, we are not sponsored. Yeah, it, our it's not to. Re- <laughs> sorry, didn't sorry didn't hear you, Sam. David. You can plug yourself you in. It's fine. <laughs> plug myself in. Can you hear me? Yes. No, I'm. <laughs> You can you can talk about the store, Carl. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. that's that was my point. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Auntie, thanks for mentioning. <laughs> but it is. I, I mean, genuinely, it's it's not that uncommon. Uh, so, it seems to be the thing that happens is you you need a store to happen, and if it doesn't, one doesn't exist, then you make it happen. Um, so, like as well, of course, saying, in, but so many other things in Roll, in Roll Derby. Of course, in Tallinn, we are much closer to Helsinki so we also there, there's one one shop in Helsinki that also is a roller derby player I think founded and, and owned at the moment uh, but yeah it's still often often quite a challenge to figure out where are you gonna get your skates are you gonna order them are they gonna fit do you mean, Aunt, did you mean jam in the box or yes, which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> jam in the box, yes. Yeah. Well, it's also like one thing when I started playing, me and Gertu found this one finish. It's basically like a roller derby flea market thingy. And then everyone from Tars Roller Derby at that time just <laughs> found themselves like, I don't know, used fresh meat packs with like skates and helmets and pads for like, a hundred euros and it was like oh okay <laughs> let's do that then <laughs> but yeah finding like unused gear except for Carl's business is is a bit difficult in in the northern countries at least Finland and Estonia so mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and obviously I think uh, I think St. Petersburg and I'm not sure if any of you any of the Baltic leagues obviously I think you got donations from Begwithed borders as well but I'm not sure that's happened. Well, has that happened for Tartu or Riga or Tallinn? No. We no. also don't get anything, haven't got anything from uh, Derby Without Borders. I thought they were, they were, de- they were definitely collecting for you. I think there was yeah, but I think uh, there were people who needed it more than yeah. us. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same thing. One funny story I can mention is that when we went to Manchester for the World Cup, I remember one of our ex-teammates actually donated one of her old gear. And we came back and we found out she did that. And we were like, why you can't just donate it to us? (laughs) (laughs) They're probably going to send it to us anyway. We're one of the leagues in need. (laughs) Support your love. Oh, <laughs> Who do you think they're gonna send it to? I don't know, the poor children in the streets of I don't know. 
the poor children on the streets. <laughs> but yeah, not, not, nothing we, we haven't received. But the, as I said, we also don't need. We have the store and we don't mind ordering yeah. online. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so I guess um, we're coming to the end of the game, by the way. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, um, I think we get end with about twice the score that Heartbreaking Dolls get, which is a very creditable performance. Um, so, um, but I also want to ask, I guess, about, I mean, every, everyone here speaks extremely good English, but better English than most English people like that. But um, is there, is there a, is there a, I don't want to say a language barrier, but it w is there a, a feeling that, you know, it would be nice to have one of those materials in Estonian or Russian or Latvian, or is, is the existence of materials in Finnish and English helpful? I mean, what's the feeling? You know, coming from small countries, I don't know how Russia feels about this, but I'm sure that Estonians understand that you're kind of used to the whole world speaking different languages and mm -hmm. that you don't expect anyone to uh, do anything in your language. You know, you don't expect things to be explained in Latvian randomly. You know? <laughs> so we all kind of adapt to the English thing and most of us speak English. The ones who don't, we, we just translate on our own. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need anything in Latvian because again, we're like 10 people right now who would need some materials. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe. But if you so, are translating stuff, is there, is there effectively, I mean, how much stuff have you translated unofficially? In a sort of unofficially translated. Yeah, I mean, how much? I, stuff actually, to be honest, I think, I think some years ago we had the WFTDA rules translated. Okay. I don't know where that copy went. Wow. I don't know why we did it. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't even one of our team girls. It was some friend of a friend. <laughs> so we have, I believe we have it somewhere in a Google Drive accessible, but nobody really. Also, the language is just weird. When you try to translate English words to Latvian or mm -hmm. Estonian, it just sounds bad. You know, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Jumps and shit like that. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't know how to call those things. So English is fine for now. That's what I wanted to come to as well. Well, since I'm from Finland, I'm going to go to the I don't know viewpoint of a Finn but like as much as I've talked to or talk with a lot of the Finnish players and clubs um, they they still use like the English rules because translating let's say the rules into Finnish you still like there's something lost in the translation and then it's just like sounds even more complicated than it is <laughs> so it's easier to like well most people in Finland at least like everyone speaks English so there's no point in trying to complicate things even more <laughs> than needed so <laughs> i i think i think in finland there was maybe around like maybe some five six years ago i think there were some efforts to translate mm -hmm. the rules to the to mm -hmm. finish but at that time the uh, rules were changing every year so much yeah. that like as soon as they made a finnish translation it was yeah. totally useless for the next rule set <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's kind of yeah. in, in finland the culture kind of became like well like let's just use the english language rules because like why would I we think use an outdated finnish version i think we lost sam again no you didn't no he's uh, here no. <laughs> who would I you miss sharing. oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm an it professional <laughs> <laughs> in in how many languages uh, the rules are uh, translated right now uh French? Well, so, well official translations Run. official translations French, German, okay. Spanish, uh Chinese, uh that's uh mainland Chinese, not uh not that so it's uh Mandarin, not Cantonese. Mm. Uh and um I think there was some work on it on an Italian translation, but it isn't official. Um so there aren't that many. Um mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on the rule set as well, because obviously um <laughs> There is a um, there is a Russian translation of the short track um, rule set because um, Saint Petersburg did that. Um, there is Russian translation for everything, actually. Yes. Is there? <laughs> did you so? Is that an official translation? Uh, there must be so, so presumably the, there's an unofficial translation presumably of the uh, of the WTDA rules. 
Uh, yeah, we're... Uh, so, rules again were updated <laughs> this January. <laughs> And uh, so the, the, the last step from an official translation to the official is like these small changes and working it into the whole new, like fresh document who will be the official translation of mm -hmm. the rules. Nice. And this is, this is really hard. I mean, I don't know if Anthony wants to comment on how hard he thinks it is to translate rules into different languages, but the WGA so. rules are... are <laughs> It's a technical document anyway, and technical translation is difficult uh, because everything is very exacting. Um, so that's why the official rules are so the sense of process. Uh, yeah, like like I said, in like coming from Finland, I already like knew that like there has been some effort to translate it to mm -hmm. Finnish, but uh, then like Finnish ended up using English anyway. So when I came to Estonia and figured like, well, I should teach the rules. I didn't even imagine translating them to <laughs> Estonian by myself. <laughs> yeah, I think there's no, like, at least in Tallinn, there's not even like a thought to translate, because our league, especially in Tallinn, is international. So we have people from like uh, Colombia and like uh, Finland, wherever, like, and we are, we keep changing because we have a lot of people who come to work here and then they discover Derby and so yeah, all of our trainings are in English. So yeah, no point in translating then. Is there ever, is there ever a temptation to develop um, signals in um, just in Estonian so that other people aren't like it? You know, <laughs> understand? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have thought about it, but uh, I think I think Latvia does the same. But like uh, in Finland also, like uh, you still you use your like inside outside in your like uh, native language. But you you uh, you caught a, like you when you play <laughs> yeah you pick up on them really fast <laughs> so there's not really no no point <laughs> say that <Yeah. laughs> say that call me <laughs> So I'm going to queue up the second bit of footage now, so um, which is also which is probably also going to be terrible quality for you lot, but at least it'll be nice on the vodcast. Um, this this was uh, Ingrid Arola's um, uh, first of heartbreaking dolls for comparison. It isn't, it isn't showing yet, don't worry. Um, which is introducing this is Ingrid uh, versus um, heartbreaking dolls. Uh, so. Guys, I think I'm gonna sign off at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. My work is calling me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could stay longer. I really do. Uh, it was talk nice to me to about see you. The... <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting all of you on the track or outside. On the thank, you for, thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> please. Stay safe and healthy. <laughs> yes, you too, my God. Oh. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. Thanks for giving me your time. Yeah, so unfortunately we, we have, I, we knew that was going to happen, but it's okay. So we had the, we had the, the Riga footage, um, well, we'll to talk about it, but yeah, so this was, uh, I don't know how the quality is for you, but this was Heartbreaking Dolls Ingria. So I want to give Hulk a chance to explain the three, the three teams in, in St. Petersburg, because they're not quite A, B, and C teams, um, is my understanding. So, um, uh, they are not quite A, B, and C teams because we actually don't want to um, uh, talk about the level of the yeah. skaters uh, because some people might just some people just have more experience, some people less. And uh, so, when people are like in a B team, this doesn't mean that they are worse than people in A team. So we call it like. Uh, teams with more or less ex uh, roller derby experience and that's why we have like white knight furies singular rollers and baltic witches who have like the junior contact the second level of the contact so with no hitting with no pushing with just sliding and mild <laughs> kicking out <laughs> of the track <laughs> Yeah, and mild also blocking. mild blocking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and also Lemur is our referee team. So like four teams. Yeah, because I think you are also 
quite early on in the whole giving the referees, the officials, their own team and their own identity, because that's been an increasingly popular thing now. But I think you were actually quite early on in that, um, doing that, I think, as a, as a thing. I think, I guess they're like one year old or one and a half year old. We what? had referees before, but mm -hmm. we didn't know that we can make like a whole team out of them. And after the greatest open skate in March 2018, where, when uh, 30 people came to first practice and 30 people are with us still. Oh. Yes. So from then, like we had a lot of more new people, and they, some of them decided to be skaters. Uh, quite a lot of them wanted to be referees and NSOs, and that was the start of making the Lemur their their own team, <laughs> only for them. <laughs> and have you found that it's actually helped? I mean, do, do they feel more cohesive um, because they have a team and they have their own stuff? I think they like their logo <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know if it depends on making, on creating a team, or it depends on uh, people involved involved there. But as far as I can see now, on our home scrimmages, they became more responsible. They are, um, they seem like a team now. I don't know if it's after the logo or after they like <laughs> spent more time together. I guess both. <laughs> yeah, so I think you also send the, your competitive teams to different kinds of events because the Furies do um, do Finnish champs now, right? And Ingvi Rollers tend to do things like Fab Slab. Um, what have the Baltic Witches been doing? Um, Baltic witches only play like home games, scrimmages. Yeah. That's it. It's like the oh, I forgot the word. <laughs> okay, it's like the step from the kittens from the fresh meat to mm -hmm. ingrain rollers. Yes. So they need to have ah? intermediate. It's a good word. Yes. B -T. Yeah. 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 Well, we're, so we're, not, they, we're not using A, B, and C. We're not being priority. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, they're like from the second level contact, they play home scrimmages. Mm -hmm. And after that, after they, after they have their roller derby game experience, they can move either to Ingria or, for example, to White Night Furies. Mm -hmm. Why not? And because um, I think because you played Moscow, was that so? Were the Moscow games Ingria then? <sighs> I thought they were witches, uh, or were they something else entirely? They're supposed to be witches yes. by the, the level, <laughs> but the level was so different uh, mm -hmm. with both our team and Moscow team because not uh, all the witches could come to Moscow mm -hmm. accidentally. And uh, in Moscow team, there were a lot of like very fresh newbies. Mm -hmm. who were also playing but that's russia that's okay yeah. they can play <laughs> so yeah but so i cannot actually say if there were like baltic witches or ingria rollers okay. there was me playing there was there were two girls playing for the very first time in their lives well you know it's a good <laughs> it's, a, it's an experience for them <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, are they still playing? Because that can also be the kind of thing that makes and breaks you as a player. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> of course, they are still playing. <laughs> yeah, in such kind of games, uh, people usually understand that, wow, this is what I was training for. <laughs> this is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, all those hits are mine. <laughs> Whether I got them, or I <laughs> gave them. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, uh, have you only played short track games against Moscow or was the last one a, a uh, full track? No, 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 no. Moscow was like the, almost the usual game, like right. the big game. 
and uh, we were playing short track only among ourselves. Okay. Because I know at one point there was a plan for you to play a short track game against Moscow. And then... Yes, but Moscow decided they wanted like a full game. Okay. Well, that's fine. Of course. They were allowed to, yeah. you know. So I know um, we have, we've talked when we we're, we're showing World W7's footage and obviously we've mentioned short track. Um, I guess I know that uh, Estonia has also had some experience internally with doing both, both boot camps and other things and on shorter format games. And do you want to say things about that? Because you also hosted a boot camp as well. So. Yeah, we had in uh, the summer of 2019, we had a boot camp in Papacy uh, where we laid both uh, uh, like a regulation size Uftra track and a short track, like over it. Carl, do you want to say something about the track laying or something? <laughs> but it, it was a good experience. Like uh, it was, I guess, the first time in history that short track was played in Estonia. And we also had a couple of uh, players, uh, skaters from uh, Kallio joining us there. So it was also the first time for them that they ever tried short track. As an, as an official, did you have any feelings about it? It was the first time that I did it. Like I, I had read the rules, mm -hmm. but then like hadn't had like any scrimmage practice or anything like that. Basically, just read read the rules and okay, let's try to play this game now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it, it was in this way for all of us. So it was the first time we touched the uh, short track there in this uh, boot camp. Did Should we also talk about the latest, just like the latest short track, whatever <laughs> festival thingy that we had? We should definitely talk about like, the latest short track yes, festival. Like we a few can, months we... ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to let you lead into it. I was giving you the first thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and we can talk about the next thing. But yes, we can. We can <laughs> sorry. We definitely we can... should talk about the short track thingy. But... <laughs> we can also jump back it's and my say aid. that. Sorry, we can also jump back and say that if. If this summer is open, then the boot camp is on, and we are going to have fun there. But if not, then not. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, I know Finnish is very excited to talk about the. <laughs> no, it's my ADHD kicking in. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's it's fine. It's fine. It is fine because we wanted to talk about it anyway, so we should talk about it. So. Yeah, cool. <laughs> But it was Carl's idea, so I think Carl should like <laughs> do the introduction and then I can hype it afterwards. <laughs> uh, so the uh, the uh, the short track festival in Tartu, you say? Yeah. That one. That one. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, uh, yeah I did enjoy that a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the... Uh, one of the, um, yeah, it's a short, it's a city, let's say it's a city festival. It's, it's a, a one day in Tartu. Uh, we want to keep it on for next time as well. And um, it's in, in our, um, yeah, it's, it, that's, that's the one will happen uh, where the head referee uh, <laughs> discovered that, that, I said she that she's a head ref discovered on the day that she's the head ref. <laughs> that there was a bit, bit of a communication. <laughs> there was, there was, yes, <laughs> yes, but it was it was international thing, and and uh, we had people in Finland, uh, in uh, from Latvia and from Estonia. So we, did we have like that's it, I guess. Um, um, did we have someone from Russia? No, yeah, no. Yeah. Did we have? I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think we did. <laughs> yeah, in in I mean, Tallinn, I mean, right? Yeah. No, not in Tallinn, in Tartu. Tartu. No, in Tartu. Then no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we got. Um, so it, it was. This is actually the first uh, first like official. 
between Tartu and uh, or the second official way between first uh, short track way between Tartu and uh, Tallinn. So we can count it the first one. <laughs> can we, Auntie? Or can, can we? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, and yeah, we played one uh, game between Tartu and Tallinn, and then we had mixed with, uh, with everybody. So we had uh, we could experience with each other, I guess. I did. We did. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. also the that's also the first one uh, we got support from uh, from a local government, which is a huge step for us actually. <laughs> So we, we, we actually did support uh, some of our officials uh, traveling. Yeah. We are validated by our country, yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's quite hard to do though, because I mean, I know... It is! <laughs> it's hard work, yes. But I don't think the Russian government is particularly supportive of the... Uh, <laughs> 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 to be okay. fair, we hide from Russian government. Yes. <laughs> we hide that there is a roller derby, that there mm -hmm. is a national team. Mm -hmm. No way we can <laughs> say to our government that there is national teams. So they can put their dirty hands in our roller derby. <laughs> do you what? think? It, oh, sorry, I was wondering oh. if it, in in Russia, like, do you think they would start like regulating it or? or What's what's like the main problem that you try to kind of keep it low key in Russia? Okay, I think the main problem, like the lightest, uh, but still the main, is that mm. anti-gay propaganda law. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't accept people under eighteen because mm -hmm. of those reasons. But mm. more, uh, we have, like, we have children and be, uh, young people coming to our games and we don't want <laughs> those games to be forbidden mm -hmm. well, um, but we have everything translated into russian <laughs> I, I, swear. <laughs> I mean considering the fact that you're avoiding uh the government you're actually doing very well as in terms of making doing a, doing official things like translating things into into, into Russian. It's ironic, um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so, but for Estonia, you actually do have now a Roller Derby governing body or something like it. Uh, you have Roller Derby East TV, which I'm, prob uh, which I'm probably going to pronounce probably badly because I don't do the vowels in Estonian very well. But so, how did how did that happen? Because obviously you have you have two teams, so um, you can have a federation. Mm. Uh, so it, yeah, I'm I'm going to answer that question. It's uh, it happened all together at the same time. Uh, it's uh, the by the time uh, there was invented two teams, there was also invented uh, a covenant body, and the first. Uh, when Tallinn got active uh, after Tartu, like quite long after Tartu, then we had our first uh, first meeting over the over over the web. And it's uh, it's uh, yeah the reason it's it's like to say grow the be on and make it big, bigger. Um, and to to uh, to uh, communicate with the communicate with the uh, local government parties. So was it uh, was it the existence of well, the East Lift that got you the funding for from local government for the short track festival, or is it all sort of the same kind of thing? It's just 
Uh, no, the the for the local festival in Tartu, it was uh, uh, it was between uh, the club of Tartu and okay. uh, the Tartu local government of the city. So, given that you want to expand Valoderby in Estonia, are you thinking about developing? Is it about developing the teams you already have, or do you have your sights on more leagues in more places, or both? Uh, yes. I want to. I want to answer also for that question. Uh, it's. A, uh, it's a. We're gonna start our new season with the. <laughs> we're gonna lose another skater. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we have less and less skaters in Tartu, but, but for sure we get more skaters. But we uh, we are going to lose uh, a skater who is going to. Another city of Estonia, of Parno, and uh, we have been talking about it. That uh, if uh, she wants to start and if she wants to lead it, and and then yeah, we we are going to help help her with the care and and the knowledge, and we, we travel there and try to, and and uh, she's thinking about it. We gonna we have to push harder so we we'll have I more people. Mm, I think in Tartu it's um it's a bit difficult. Like it's quite difficult for the fact that like Tartu is a student city, so we have a lot of people coming from different countries and then they will stay here for let's say a year or half a year and then they will leave. So we have like people kinda fluctuating coming in and skating and whatnot but they won't like stay and become like part of the team that we're playing with yeah. so that's like it's really hard to keep people in as Laura, Laura said earlier as well like it's it's hard to attract people and then <laughs> get them to stay with us <laughs> and we have this like running joke when we meet <laughs> we all know each other quite well so we have this running joke like when we go out we usually like if we see someone who's like even slightly interested in derby it's like flirting you go to some random dude or girl and you're like oh what's your what's your <coughs> shoe size maybe you want to come and try derby with her <laughs> anything goes at this no. point <laughs> you have to modern modern problems require modern solutions <laughs> Speaking about modern solutions, uh, want to know some Russian life hack about how yes. to make people from other countries stay here in play roller derby? Start dating them. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sorry. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what Siri said about... Uh, Tartu being a student city, uh, I think many many student towns who have roller derby struggle with mm. that. I, I guess like often student towns will have a roller derby team because there will be some crazy students who want to try this thing out. But yeah, this happens all every time that you, after two or three years, you lose them because they leave. Uh, mm. I guess Tallinn is probably a little bit better in that sense that that uh, being the capital, there's a little bit more uh, people, but still, we also struggle with the fact that uh, that people tend to come and go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, um, talking about uh, developing teams or getting more teams in Estonia, I think uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Carl, there was already some thought that we should have some kind of Derby tour, maybe like play Tallinn and Tartu in Narva, for example. But but then uh, the problem was even having the game in the first place. <laughs> that was an idea, yes. But we, we have, but we can do it again. Mm. Yeah, the Narva is yeah would be good if somebody would start it there. And there's nothing wrong with with kickstarting it by having a game, as you said. I mean, mm. I don't know if you have watched the Czech edition of this podcast, but Ostrava has hosted, uh, Ostrava in Eastern Czech Republic, the Czech Republic has hosted a game before actually having really a team with any skaters mm. because they happen to have a really good venue. So, um, 
it's it's it is a thing you can do, and apparently it works. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe if we can't uh, form a roller derby team in Parno, maybe we can go play roller derby in Parno. Oh, yeah, did they, definitely. Do they have any good venues? Have you have you scouted them out? You should scout them out to see if they have a good venue. Too. I think um, they have. Yeah, for sure they have venues there. At least one, two, definitely. There, yeah, there's a venue between. Uh, it's, it's different city between Tallinn and Tartu, exactly in the middle, uh, called Bay. But but this place is, I guess, too small. But even if, uh, yeah. But not out to Tallinn, we could travel there. So there's, there's one when you sorted out, uh, yeah, we wanted to uh, practice for the Derby Sevens will happen in Tartu, I think, at some point. Yeah. But in Berno, also, pretty sure they have. Yeah. But then the, the struggle the, really is to, yeah. uh, to, like, if they let people in. As as much as we get new skaters, we also lose skaters. So and of course, like both Tartu and Tallinn, Tallinn is e even younger, but Tartu still is also quite a young league. So mm. just having enough skaters to actually play a game is <laughs> is a struggle many times. <laughs> yeah. Barl, I mean, do you think that the fact that um, like the median age in Tartu roller derby is quite high? I'm not shaming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that that's like something to do with like the amount of skate of skaters that we still have? Because like a lot of people have like full on lives with their families, including you and stuff. So I bet it's like really hard to try and do roller derby full time on the side. <laughs> you have to say that once again. It's. it's uh... I'm wondering if the the fact that like. Or a lot of people in Tartu Roller Derby, for example, like are older, let's say 30 plus years old. Do you think that it's like harder to keep those people? In? I'm not shaming anyone. <laughs> I said that earlier. I'm not shaming anyone, but just the fact of like juggling like a life with your family and a full time job and then Roller Derby. Like, I think the average, really... average uh, age in the Roller Derby is 45, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I cannot answer it. It's, it's uh, I cannot say. I, I hope it's yeah. It's uh, yeah. We all have families, and we yeah. It's hard to hard to uh, hard to be there full time, but but we we have to do it. So. Oh yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Does it answer the question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was just wondering. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's good. It's because uh... I I know that in Tallinn, like the like average age of players is like a I'm lot lower. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, a bit lower than in Tartu. So I was oh, like wondering. Still, still we, but we, not too much. Not too much actually. <laughs> we can still beat them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Siri. <laughs> well, it's one to I'm one not right worried. now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we have also we have also uh, uh, one two juniors come in. Uh, we get more juniors <laughs> in to practice. Actually, uh, it's interesting that you uh, mentioned juniors because I have been thinking that uh, in Estonia. Uh, in Tartu and Tallinn, at least there are like several uh, like um, roller skating uh, clubs that do actually have quad skates, mm. which uh, I, I I can't like give a list of names, but but still like uh, I think there are many like uh, young skaters in Tallinn and Tartu uh, who are probably getting interested more and more about roller derby when when we do something. <laughs> mm. It's it's always a good it's always a good place to recruit from, you know, and you know younger people is always good because they come into the sport and hopefully last longer than. <laughs> I think we're being distracted by your by by cattails and your screen help. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There are two of them, and they want to 
be with me sometime. <laughs> That's okay. I, there have been several podcasts where I've been attacked by cats. <laughs> but yeah, so I think um, we've been going for what? a while. But yes, so thank. I, th I, th I think it does seem very positive, though, for, I mean, it's nice to see that Estonian Derby has a very positive um, aim to actually grow things, and if they're looking at growing into new cities, and obviously... <laughs> In Russia, Moscow is slowly growing, and who knows? So um, it's nice to see, I guess, that there's this positivity um, in the region. Um, and hopefully things will continue to grow in the future. Um, and hey, maybe, maybe, um, maybe one of the Estonian teams can join, um, could join um, White Knight Furies in the Finnish, um, the Finnish Nationals. <laughs> 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 I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take it over. Just, just turn it into a Baltic national, into a Baltic. <laughs> yeah, that's our joke here. Also, that the Finns are coming in and taking over Estonian roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Estonian, I swear. <laughs> but it's nice. It's uh, yeah. I think especially the last year with. First, like the connections that we are making with both Latvia, Finland, and Russia, it's it's uh, it motivates us a lot more. Especially like where a few of us went to like Kalio to practice with them because we met in the summer boot camp, and it was so nice to actually be with such skilled players. Like because <laughs> usually we have like maybe five people in practice who we can do contact with. And uh, and also I'm really grateful for the short short track uh, gameplay because it allows us to actually play with Tartu and uh, maybe even in the future with like in league uh, in our in our team ourselves. So yeah, I think uh, short track uh, is making it uh, like a lot more accessible for mm. small teams. So that's that's really great. No, it's it's been it's been but it's been a surprisingly positive thing, short track derby. For I think when they created it, they, when when Roller Skate Club created it, they didn't quite expect it to have the applications that perhaps it has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very glad it's been as useful as it has in the Baltics and in, and in Russia. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I I would say like. Uh, Roller derby, as it as it's played with the uh, women's flat track rules, of course, it's 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 having that many people on the track and having that tra big track is exciting, mm -hmm. but it's so often such a big uh, challenge to actually get enough people to do that. So short track really like fills the uh, like the the need to actually do something with less people. And uh, earlier when we were talking about the um, uh, boot camp where we tried short, short track for the first time, I was actually quite surprised how, as, as an official, you can just read the rules and then just start playing. That like <laughs> it actually worked out. <laughs> <laughs> but Auntie also like yeah, it's it takes less people, but also you, there's more places you can play short track in <laughs> and not yeah. have a full track game with the uh, safe space and, and officiating space and yeah. whatnot. So that's very really true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a thing that came up in the UK because. Weirdly, uh, so in the UK, I don't know if this is true in Estonia, the sports track, the sports courts are, are measured in the, in the number of badminton courts they can hold. Um, okay. yes, it's a weird thing. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, the, and they tend to be two court or four court or six court. Mm. And so it turns out that the WTGA tr uh, standard track with safety uh, mm. margin for, for OPRs is... I think it works out as being like five meters too long to fit in the smallest possible, um, the smallest con oh, no. conforming um, hall. Now it turns out that obviously a lot of halls aren't the smallest they can be, but if you, mm. it does mean that if you do, you do, you do have a venue that's on the small size. You're, it's just slightly too short to for. Uh. So yeah, um, you know, metrics are a thing, and I think people design their rules to fit the 
holes that are available to them, right? So yeah. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. But um, no, I think this has been this has been a good talk. I think uh, I think we've come to a logical pause in the discussion. So I'd like to are we are we okay uh, to end at this point? Yeah. Is there anything is there anything else want anything you want to announce before we go? Because this is the time to announce things. Uh, I, mean, no, I think we've announced that we're having we're having another. We're having another um, short track festival and boot camp at some point. Uh, we've already announced those. So, um, <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's create. Uh, sorry, th yeah. Wanted to say something. No, no, say stuff. Let's, yeah, make, a right. let's make a tournament. Let's make a tournament. Let's make it. Let, let's make a tournament, and also let's make uh, a national team. Mm -hmm. A national team Estonia before the Finns are taken over. <laughs> Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, now you're not a star. <laughs> it's the national pride. Ah. <laughs> it's the national pride kicking in. <laughs> no, yeah, but no, there were, there, were, there were good things in the future. So I'm, I'm glad we've got to show people a bit about what's happening in the, Bal in the Baltics and especially the positive things that are happening and the things that are happening in Russia as well. Uh, but for now, I think I will let this all go. So I'd like you all to wave goodbye to the audience who have been excited by things, and then we'll close. We'll close. So thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Bye. Ciao, Thank ciao. You, Sam. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Here's everyone. Bye.